excuse me, welcome to the CMAC 5.4 on AWS webinar. Um, my name is Erin Valentine. I work at UNC Chapel Hill with the Institute for the Environment. Um, and I am helping to just kind of coordinate the webinar today. Um, today, the webinar will be led by Liz, who I'll introduce in just a couple minutes here. Um, but as you come in, uh, what we're gonna do is um, everybody on here, if you have any questions as we go along, please feel free to use the Q&A function at the bottom, um, not the chat. I, don't, I think the chat should be closed off for people. So feel free to submit questions to the Q&A and we'll answer those at the end. Um, and Kristen, if you would like to introduce yourself. Sure, thanks, Erin. Hi, everybody. I'm Kristen Foley. I'm from the EPA, um, our Research Triangle Park campus in North Carolina. And uh, thank you for joining us. I'm really excited about uh, this webinar. I'm joined on the panel um, with Fahim Sidi, my colleague, um, and we both are part of the CMAC team um, at EPA's Office of Research and Development. And uh, we've had a very long and productive collaboration with the CMAS Center for many years. Um, and part of that, back in 2020, uh, we started working together on building the capacity uh, to be able to um, have CMAC in the cloud. And that meant both sharing data sets and actually running the model in a cloud environment. And Liz Adams, that you're about to hear from, really led the way in um, building that expertise on making that a reality. Um, so I'm really excited for you to hear uh, all that she has learned and is going to be able to share on how to, how to run CMAC on uh, Amazon Web Services. You're going to hear Liz say this, but I also wanted to say it. We are absolutely looking for your feedback um, when you're you know, seeing this webinar or trying out the tutorials or going to the AWS cloud data storage and seeing the data sets we've put, put there. I'm just really interested in feedback on what data sets would be most helpful, um, what kinds of uh, support that you all need as you try to explore these resources as well. So um, thanks again. I'll toss it back to Erin. Thanks, Kristen. So uh, again, welcome in everybody. So I'm going to be sharing in the chat here um, our PowerPoint file that we're going to be using um, in just a moment. It's being a little bit difficult, uh, but I will share that with you guys in just a second if you'd like to follow along. And that way you can uh, click on any links that are included in the presentation. There's also a couple of QR codes towards the end as well. Um, and as I said before, feel free to use the Q&A function at the bottom um, for any questions you have. And Liz and our group will get to them at the end of the presentation. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna introduce Liz. So Liz Adams is a research associate at the UNC Institute for the Environment. Uh, Liz has over 15 years of experience in CMAC applications, including installation, benchmarking, debugging, user training, and support. Uh, Liz's recent efforts include developing resources for running CMAC on the cloud, uh, and she will be presenting a webinar on the CMAC on AWS tutorial that enables users to quickly create high-performance computers on AWS and run CMAC. So Liz, thank you so much for leading this webinar today, and I will hand it over to you. Thanks, Erin and Kristen and uh, Fahim. Thanks to all my colleagues who have worked collaboratively on this project, and thanks also to the funding for um, from the EPA for this work. So the goal is to help enable folks in the CMAC community who are interested in running on the cloud um, to do that using CMAC. And uh, let's see if I can get my... Um, so the objectives of this webinar is to kind of describe the tutorial that's available online. So this tutorial steps you through um, running CMAC either on a single virtual machine or on a parallel cluster, which is uh, offered by AWS as a tool that you can use to create a high performance cluster in the cloud. And so uh, I'll just be describing what's available in the tutorial and also demonstrating portions of it. So why is the cloud ideal for running CMAC? Um, I think it's great for hopefully transitioning to the cloud and also training new users. So if you don't have any experience on, on how to install and run CMAC, uh, running on the cloud using these pre-installed um, setups uh, that we're offering through the tutorial should hopefully get people um, spun up and running CMAC much faster. Um, the EC2 instances are provisioned in a few minutes and you avoid the 
kind of the whole installation process of all the libraries and everything you need to run CMAC. And you also avoid wait times if you're on a shared system. Um, and also running on the cloud, you're renting resources, not, not using them, um, not purchasing them up front. And so there's a, a learning curve to transitioning to run CMAC on the cloud. But once that transition has been made, I feel that it'll help improve both on-premises and um, our cloud uh, workflows. So the cloud, the AWS resources allow you to, to right size um, the CMAC runs that you're doing for your domain size. And so in this tutorial, I'm providing three different domain sizes and re making recommendations about what size um, machines to run those um, platforms are. And so that's what the table is at the bottom of the screen. Um, so we'll come back to, to some of these numbers and um, costs later. But the idea is that you don't have to use the most expensive compute nodes to run smaller cases. You can right size your um, the, the choices that you make in terms of what resources you want to use for the domain size that you have. Um, and so another re reason is this parallel cluster allows you to auto scale, um, basically use more virtual machines um, to run CMAC on the cloud. And this will allow you, like if you're running a base case, small domain, you could use a very small compute node. If you're um, running more complex cases, such as WARF CMAC um, with two-way coupling or with coupling, then you might need a, a larger EC2 instance. Um, and that is all available and configurable when you uh, transition to run on the cloud. You can also benchmark CMAC on different instance types. So the latest and greatest releases of all of these um, EC2 instances are available for you to use and to determine how well CMAC is running on them. Um, and then, of course, the other great uh, thing about running CMAC on the cloud is the availability of data. So as NASA and EPA and all the agencies make more and more of their data available and share it on the cloud um, in low cost um, storage options, then you can get access to that data and run your um, run your CMAC runs from there, rather than downloading all the data to your on-premises system and trying to run locally. Um, so, and the last point here is about infrastructure as code. So by scripting, not only uh, using scripts to run CMAC or build and install CMAC, but also uh, creating scripts to create the clusters that you're using, you can come up with a reproducible workflow and method that others can use to create the exact same clusters and run CMAC the exact same way. So that's very helpful when you're going to publish uh, your work. So we're, we're offering data that's available from the EPA on the CMAS data warehouse on AWS. And this is a a warehouse that is part of the AWS Open Data Program. And so uh, as a result of that, by providing this data, uh, there's no egress fees or there's no fee when you download the data if you wish to do that to your system. Um, and there's no fees if you're using the data in a different region, perhaps from where the data is being stored in the cloud. Um, and so we're hosting this data on behalf of the EPA Office of Research and Development and also the Office of Air and Radiation. So we have equates data, we have annual data, we have um, some emissions modeling platform data, and the, there's a link at the bottom of the page, or there's two links. One is for the data itself on the registry, and the other is for the metadata that's in the Dataverse site at the bottom. Um, so the tutorial that I'm describing is available in this link, um, and it targets both novice users and advanced users. So um, we're currently um, providing the benchmark cases that you can reproducibly run CMAC and test and verify that the output is correct. Um, and we're doing it, um, this tutorial is going to cover a method using resources that are available to EPA because we know uh, that folks at EPA have access only to a certain region of AWS, the US East one. Um, and we have also heard feedback since the last time we gave a presentation at the CMAS conference about this, that folks may or may not have access to the AWS management console. And so therefore this 
webinar will describe ways of using the AWS command line if you don't have access to the management console. So the resources that we're gonna be using, um, this is a slide from AWS, that, but in yellow, I've circled um, what resources we're using to build our HPC cluster. So we're using the HPC 6A, which is an AMD processor um, with elastic block storage. So the storage, um, basically these EC2 instances are comprised of compute, storage, the networking, and software. And for storage, we're using the elastic block storage. We're using Lustra, which is called FSX on AWS, and we're using the Amazon S3 buckets, which are the low cost storage options. We're using a fast elastic fabric adapter. And then again, we're using the AWS parallel cluster and to create the cluster and then also to submit jobs to the queue using Slurm. And so there's a nice video from AWS about, about this if you'd like to look at that as well. Um, the type of EC2 instances that we're using include um, the C6A48 Extra Large, which has 92 cores if you disable hyperthreading. And by dis disabling hyperthreading, you get away from issues with cache conflicts. So it speeds up the performance. Um, and so the, this is a recommendation that we make as well. Um, and then the HPC equivalent option automatically disables hyperthreading. So they, they um, Amazon also recommends that for these type of uh, tightly coupled applications like CMAC. So the tutorial here, we're gonna be talking about running using spot market pricing or, or low cost pricing versus on-demand pricing, which is a fixed pricing. Um, so these are just terms that I'm trying to go through so that you'll recognize them as we get to the scripts and setting up uh, these clusters or the single virtual machines in the cloud. So elastic block storage, this is another option of storage that gives you high performance, low latency disks that you'll need in order to run CMAC efficiently. And then Lustra, uh, so that's where our software is installed currently. And then the um, input and output data is stored on the Lustra file system. And that is also um, giving you really high throughputs and sub millisecond latencies. And it's also capable of loading data directly from an S3 bucket. So you don't have to copy data from the S3 bucket to your cluster or to your system. It um, does that uh, loading of the data for you, which is a very nice feature. Um, and then the simple storage service, that's S3 buckets. We're using that again uh, to get the data from. And then network options are described here as well. So the benchmarks that we're, we've provided, um, I don't know if you can see these. So over here, over Long Island is the very smallest benchmark. It's a um, 12 listos domain, this 25 by 25 by 35, and very small um, 1.9 gigabytes of data. The next domain size is this um, 12 Northeast 3 that we provide with CMAC as, as a benchmark data set. And it's a little larger, it's 56 gigabytes. Um, and it's a one day um, case. And then the very largest um, domain is the 12 US 1, which um, is 85 gigabytes of input data for two days worth of data. So this data again is provided on the CMAS data warehouse in a bucket. And so um, it's gonna be available for anyone to use and you can download this to your on-premises system. And you can go through the entire tutorial, whether you're running in the cloud or on-premises, um, you would just need to follow the instructions for installing CMAC and using the scripts that are in the repository that I'll be describing. Um, so this is the structure of the tutorial. First, we describe how to get a single virtual machine up and running. And we load that virtual machine with software and data using a CMAC, what's called an AMI, a machine image. Um, and then once you have that machine running, you can quickly run CMAC. The next method is to create a parallel cluster, which is many, many virtual machines. Um, and that data is loaded. The data is loaded from the S3 bucket, but the software is located, located on a CMAX snapshot, which is public. And so that you can have access to in order to build the cluster. And so this, uh, this 
ability to share both the data and the um, software installation, I think will help make um, make it easier for new users and for anyone to reproducibly um, get CMAC up and running. Um, and then the next step that we'll be talking about a little bit in this webinar is about the performance cost and the optimization of running CMAC. If you use these one or two day benchmarks, you can kind of figure out how much it might cost to run an entire year's worth of uh, CMAC runs versus just based on the performance of a couple of days. Um, and so there's also additional things that I won't be describing in this webinar, including a developer's guide, basically how to install CMAC uh, yourself on the cluster um, and or on the uh, virtual machine, and then um, how to do the post-processing. And of course, the key to using any cloud resources is after you're done using them, you need to delete the resources so that you're no longer incurring costs. Um, so let's go on to the next. Um, so things I'm not going to describe in this webinar are how to set up your user account in the AWS Management Console. And you may need to have, you know, if you're part of a larger group and you have an administrator who handles all that, you'll need to ask them to help you get set up. I was able to get set up using um, just the free account initially, and then it transitions into, a, um, I think after a year, then you can... Um, you can use free resources, but these those would not cover these type of um, compute instances, these larger instances. And so um, you would start incurring charges, but um, there's some information about, like you should be able to do these tutorial runs, two day benchmark runs for a, you know $10 or maybe 15. So it's not gonna break the bank as long as you are clear on getting the resources spun up, uh, running CMAC and then tearing everything down so that you're no longer getting charged. Um, so the things that you need to request if you have an administrator is the use of a C6A48 extra large instance in the East US one region for both on-demand and spot instances, I would recommend. And then also access to the EVS and Lustre file system. Um, and then there are also other instance types which are less expensive, including the HPC 7G 16 extra la large. And that instance is available in the US East one, but I'm not gonna cover that in this webinar, but it is available in the tutorial. Um, so we provide the Z shell scripts to install and run CMAC. We provide, um, or we give instructions on how to use environment variables to keep the underlying libraries separate. So if you have to use NetCDF Classic versus NetCDF for compressed, libraries, you would want to do that uh, using environment modules to keep the keep them separate from each other so you don't get uh, conflicts. Um, so we're, we're highly recommending using environment for modules for those libraries. And then run scripts that you can use to do the scaling tests. So different scripts are needed for different compute instance types because they have different numbers of cores. Um, so you have to customize these sections of the uh, run script. And so it includes setting the domain decomposition, setting the number of columns and the number of rows. And then also, if you're using Slurm on the parallel cluster, you have to set the equivalent values for the number of nodes that you're using and the task per node. Um, so... I'm going to try to do my best to show you how to create both a single virtual machine and a parallel cluster. So the single virtual machine uses a JSON template and um, we'll use that template to create the virtual machine and then we will run CMAC. The same thing, a very similar method will be used for parallel cluster. In that case, we're using that YAML file um, and we'll be using the command line to create the cluster and then run CMAC using the Slurm workload manager. And so um, I've already described the benchmarks that we're using. And if you want to um, kind of examine the scripts that we'll be using in the tutorial, you would wanna clone this re repository locally um, to your machine. And so I already have it cloned on my machine, but I'll show you from the command line what, what the commands look like or what the scripts look like. So this, I don't know if you guys can see that. Sorry. Um, 
I was seeing a, a little bit of a problem. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't know what the best way to show this slide is, but these are the steps that you need to take um, in order to provision. I'll just so it's missing the header here from what I can see, but you, you're trying to. We're going to be provisioning um, a single virtual machine using the command line, and this is what the workflow looks like from your local machine. You basically run a command called AWS EC2 run instances and give it a pre-configured um, JSON file. And so the, the items highlighted in yellow include items that you will have to set up and be that will be unique to your account, account, including a key pair, which has a key pair name, and usually it's a name.pem. And so in this uh, syntax, you don't add the .pem to, to the name, you just reference it as key name and then give it the name um, without the .pem extension. And then the other thing that's unique to your account is the security group. So I'll be using this exact commands. I'll be taking this, uh, oh, hopefully copying and pasting this in my local uh, machine. So sorry for this low tech method of demonstrating, but um, so I've copied that machine, that instruction and I'm just going to run it. And so you can see the output that's generated and, and it's basically saying that I've requested a C6A two extra large machine. Um, and once that run instance command has been done, completed, so I use Q to exit that statement. So these are a bunch of debug statements. You don't have to worry about them. What you wanna do next is use a command to say, what is the IP address for the machine that you just created? And so this is the command to, to get that IP address. Um, once you have that IP address, you will want to log into it. And I'm going to give it a few minutes um, because it needs to spin up. But uh, you basically use the command um, as follows. You're SSHing using the key pair that you um, specified at the command line option to log into that machine. And since we're using an Ubuntu operating system, the way to log into it is to using use the username Ubuntu. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to log in now. And I'm gonna say yes uh, to allow that. And so you can see that it has brought up a machine um, and we can then start uh, exploring what's available. So you could use the command module list to see if anything's loaded and it has not, nothing's been loaded yet. And then you can see that there are some module commands here, module files that you can load. And so we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna do the command module load. And basically this is making sure that we have the libraries that are required to run CMAC loaded. So this is the software environment. Um, so we're on, again, we're on the cluster where we will be able to run CMAC. And so I'll go to the directory where, where CMAC is installed. It's already pre-installed. Um, and you can look at, probably looks similar to some uh, directories that, where you've been running CMAC in the past. And from here, we can go ahead and edit the run script to run just for one day, because I do just want to do a quick demonstration. So I'll edit the file. And you can see if we use uh, change the end date to the same as the start date, it will run just for one day. It was set to run for three days uh, before. So we're going to go ahead and run this from the command line. And the way you do that, you could follow along um, just by using this command here, I'll go ahead and copy and paste versus typing things out. Um, and you can see this; these commands here to pipe to both a log file and to the screen allow you to see the models begin to run and output um, is being generated. 
And so if I created another uh, basic window, uh, we can we can do a history to see what the command was to log into that machine. And I'm going to log in again. And then I'm going to run the command htop. And this is going to show us uh, basically that CMAC is running on four processors, one, two, three, four. And it's using um, about, uh, here it's 99.7% of the CPU. So as long as that is the case, that it's using 100% um, CPU, then it's using the resources fairly efficiently. When you have to worry is if there's a, um, you know only 10% of the CPU is being used. And if that were the case, then you may have an IO issue um, and you can investigate that further. We have some commands in the tutorial about how to preload data. So this data that's on this machine was originally from a snapshot. And there are times if the data sets are very large where you'd want to preload that data so that it is automatically resident locally on the machine versus on the snapshot. Um, I'm not going to cover that method because it's not necessary for these smaller, the smaller domain. Um, let's see. So I've got that run going. Now I'm just going to talk a little bit more about what, what was in that JSON file um, that created the single virtual machine. So if for this machine, we we're using a JSON file um, that was a C6A too extra large. If you had a larger case, like you wanted to run the 12 US1 domain, this is where you would make a change. You would instead say C6A48 extra large to get 96 processors instead of four processors. So whatever your instance type is being set to is what type of machine you're going to create up in the cloud. Um, the AMI name, so in this case, it's a publicly available AMI and anyone should be able to use it. That's where the software is installed. And then here's where we're specifying what price we want to pay. So if you wanted to make sure that um, the machine was available always without, uh, if you use a spot instance, you're getting a lower cost, but you may be preempted. Um, so for, you know, a, a workload that you wanted to make sure was not interrupted, you would want to use the on-demand option instead of the spot option. Let me see what the next. So again, this is the H top similar to what I showed. And then once the run is completed, you could use a tail to just see how long uh, it took for that model run to complete. So I'll let that model, it should take about four minutes. I, I'll let it run in the background and while we go ahead and talk about the next topic, which is um, the parallel cluster. So this is a very similar workflow, similar to a, a single virtual machine, but now we're creating a, a parallel cluster. And so the commands are slightly different because uh, we have to activate basically an environment that allows the parallel cluster environment to be par parallel cluster commands to be recognized. Um, and once those this uh, is done, then you'll be able to see um, to configure your own cluster and then um, there are portions of the YAML file where you're going to want to use basically a template that I've already created that's configured uh, for this C6A48 extra large type machine. Um, but you'll need to change specific parts of the YAML file to uh, include your subdomain, some other things that are unique to your account. So basically, you want to start from the template that I'm providing and then substitute in the values that are unique to your account. And then you would run this uh, command, sorry. Um, so let me go back to see if our run is completed. Yeah, so this is completed and it ran in 200, 219 seconds. Um, so we have successfully run CMAC for that Listos domain um, on four processors. And uh, you could see the output is available. Here, we're not using the Lustre file, file system. We're using um, the shared EVS volume. And you can see um, I think I should CD to those. Um, so basically, the output that we just 
Oops, that's not where it's going. <laughs> Hmm, where did my output go? Well, I, I think I have to figure that out. So So in this script, we are specifying the output directory. I just need to find out what that setting was for. So it's under CMAC data output. And what is CMAC data? Oh, I know where it is. So it's here locally to this. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is the data that we just generated. And I can tell that by the um, the file, the dates on the file. And so if you had, if we had Verity installed or some other visualization software, you could also visualize the output um, right on this cluster. So you could do all your post-processing in addition to running CMAC on the cloud. And we have some additional descriptions of the methods on how to do that. Um, I can't remember I went on this kind of rabbit hole of discovery of where the output data was, and I'm not remembering the point that I was trying to make, but the key is that um, this data is available on the cloud and you can reproducibly compare it to uh, the benchmark data output that we provide in the CMAS data warehouse as well. Um, so once, you, once you've successfully run on a system and you're done, you would want to delete the resources. Again, because you're being charged as long as the resources are running. Um, and so this is one of the disadvantages of running on a single virtual machine. If you're sizing for the um, workload of running CMAC for, um, for a large domain and then doing post-processing on that same very large EC2 instance, you're gonna be incurring a lot of costs. Whereas the parallel cluster allows you to do some of the post-processing on the head node um, or the machine that's basically acting as a scheduler for running the compute nodes. And so you only incur costs for the expense of compute nodes when, those, when CMAC is running but you can do your post-processing analysis on the head nodes or on some other smaller instance size and only be charged uh, for those resources because you don't really need an expensive compute node to do the post-processing. Um, so let me go ahead and delete this uh, system. So we'll, I'm gonna go back to my um, instructions. I apologize for the window. So I'm going to be looking to see what the instance name is. So we're going to describe So I can see this uh, compute instance is running. And so I'm going to grab the instance ID, copy it, um, and then I'm going to delete or terminate this instance so it no longer is charging us. Okay, so that's been, uh, it's basically shutting down now. And so it will no longer charge after this point. So now I'm gonna switch to the workflow for running the parallel cluster. So um, you would basically need to source these commands after you've installed the parallel cluster command line. And then once those, uh, once that environment has been activated, you can uh, run a p cluster configure command. Um, I'm not going to do that because I already have it configured for our system, but I will go ahead and create a parallel cluster. And the reason for this is it takes about five minutes to get that cluster up and running. So while it's getting uh, provisioned, I'm going to go ahead and describe what's in the YAML file that's used to create it. So oh, first I have to go to the right directory. So I'm going to go into the YAML directory. And 
should work. Okay. Let me just make sure this starts. Okay. So this is what's what it's doing now is creating the cluster, and we can use some commands um, later on to describe the status. So we'll use this command called uh, p cluster describe cluster uh, here, and just check up on it occasionally. So it will take about five minutes. And so, um, whoops, I don't want to create the cluster. I want to describe. Okay, so we're going to just describe the cluster and it's basically still create in progress. So while that's creating, I'm going to describe what was used, the settings that were used to provision that cluster. So the things that we'll do after this has been uh, brought up, we're going to log into it using a very similar command that we use to log into the single virtual machine. And then uh, we will do some work to run CMAC. And then afterwards, we'll delete the cluster. So the workflow again is here. Let's see. I'm going to show this in slideshow mode. OK, so this is the YAML file. It's basically um, a text file that you can edit. And the things that you would want to edit, depending on what um, compute resources you're choosing, are um, the head head node type. So this in this case, you'd want to choose something that's the same family as the compute node that you're using, because this is where you're doing the compiling. So you would want to make sure that you're using the same AMD processor type uh, for the head node as you are specifying for the compute nodes. And then in this section here, which is basically specifying the slurm queues, we are choosing the C6A48 extra large with a maximum number of those machines as 10. You can increase this maximum number to a larger number, but you may have to get permissions from your um, AWS administrator to, to see what the max number that you could use. Um, in our case, we're only going to use three of them for the CMAC run that we're going to do. Um, so we don't actually need a 10 to be available, but it'll be nice to see what they what it looks like to show how many compute nodes you have available waiting for you in the queue. And again, when you create this cluster, the only thing that you'll be charged for initially is this head node. It's only when you start to run CMAC and start to use the compute nodes that you'll get charged for these compute nodes. And so if the run fails right away and you have to do some debugging, the only charge will be back on this head node again. Um, so while you do debugging, you'll be on your head node and only when this um, machines CMAC is running, you'll get charged for the more expensive compute nodes. And the software again is stored over here on this snapshot. So this, this is a publicly available snapshot and you should be able to use this. Um, and, and it's unencrypted um, because you can't share publicly an encrypted snapshot. So that's why it's unencrypted. And then the input and output data is on the Lustre file system. And this is what the command looks like here. The import path specifies the name of the S3 bucket. In this case, it's CMAS, CMAC. Um, and we, I'll show you some more commands about how to examine what's in um, an S3 bucket. Um, but basically, you're getting a file system path that matches all the data that's in the bucket. So for this reason, most data that's up in the S3 bucket should not be like compressed unless you would like to spend time uncompressing that data. Um, basically, you would want the, the file structure of the files in your S3 bucket to match the file structure of what how you want to run on your local file system or on the Lustra uh, file system. Let's see. So this is a diagram of what we're creating using that YAML file. Again, you're using the command line to, to create this parallel cluster. This is everything in the blue box is in the parallel cluster. The first thing is the head node. It's a C6A large. Um, the shared file system is an EBS volume. Slurm is basically going to just, when you submit a Slurm job or when you submit something to the queue, you will we be creating or provisioning these compute nodes. And so depending on how many compute nodes you requested in your Slurm uh, instructions, they will be created for you when you go to run CMAC. And you're reading data from the FSX file system, the Lustre file system. 
And at the end of the tutorial um, that's available online, I provide instructions on how to copy data from that file system to your own S3 bucket so that you save that output data at the end of a run or at the end of your workflow. Okay. So HPC, um, again, let me see where I am, sorry. <laughs> Oh yeah. So again, we are using Slurm to auto scale the number of um, compute nodes to run CMAC. And so you could also, in addition to running one job, um, running CMAC on multiple um, cores or nodes, compute nodes, multiple EC2 instances, you could also run multiple CMAC runs. Say you wanted to run a base and a zero op zero out run at the same time, you just submit multiple jobs to the queues. So as long as you have enough machines specified in that uh, YAML file, in this case, we had 10 uh, C6A 48 extra large machines, each having 96 cores. Um, as long as you don't over provision or request too many cores for your job, it will efficiently use those resources. So you submit jo the jobs um, to the using sbatch and you only incur costs again when the compute nodes are running and if the if the compute nodes fail they automatically shut off after some time limit and so in in that yaml file i have a five minute um shutdown time but if you're really efficient and you know like if your job failed you want it to shut down after one minute you could change that time limit and it would shut down after one minute um, so basically, there's little waste in uh, keeping those resources up and available. So the head node remains available, and um, that's the only thing you're being charged for, with the exception of the Lustre file system so and the EVS file system. So the storage are, is still accumulating costs as long as the head node is up. Um, and so, for example, if you left a parallel cluster up with the head node with nothing running on it, you would, uh, for a month, you would incur a charge of $384 for that Lustre file system and less for the EBS file system. But it is a cost and it's probably something you don't want to be incurring. So it's just better to delete the cluster after you're done. Um, so these are the commands we're going to use to create the cluster. I'm going to just go through this method that you can also use once you get your accounts set up. So I'm just going to copy. I think we already did this. Oh, yeah, we already we went through this create cluster step, and then we're going to run this um, cluster, this describe cluster command again to see if it's completed or not. Nope, it's still working. <laughs> so we're going to let it uh, continue. I can show you a few things while while we're waiting for that, let's see what the next step is. So check the status, then we're going to log in next. So while we're waiting for that cluster to come up, I can show you what it looks like um, from the um, from the AWS command, uh, sorry, what's it called? Console. Oh. So let's see what what region we're in. So there's a couple things about this, um, about this console. Uh, one is the, um, the region can be specified and changed here. So we are running in the US East one region. Um, and then if you wanted to run and monitor resources that you have uh, are using, uh, in a different region, you basically just change the region from this pull down menu option. Um, so right now we're running in the US East one and it's not showing any uh, not showing any EC2 instances going yet. So it's taking some time. Um, but we can see that nothing has failed yet. It's just saying create in progress. So, um, another thing I can show you is in addition to this way of monitoring basically the EC2 instances that are running, there's also um, a new user interface to monitor your parallel cluster resources. 
And so you can see here, although we're doing things from the command line, you can also monitor the status of your clusters um, in this user interface as well. So this CMAC cluster is uh, getting created as we speak. Um, and then once those instances have been created, they will show up here as well. And so um, it's a nice uh, ability to both create from the command line. And once you get this um, AWS parallel cluster user interface up, and working on your account, then you can also use that same method of creating a cluster. Um, let's see. If you use this pull down menu here, you can use a create a cluster with a template and basically um, get that same template that we uh, used. This is a not the exact same template, but it's another template. Basically, it pre fills um, this website and allows you to create. So I could create another cluster um, that's specified using a different um, compute node. And I'm not sure if there are limits to the number of clusters that you can have up and running at the same time. So I won't go through this process, but it is a very nice feature. And we'll be demonstrating this at the workshop at the CMAS conference in October. So I'll give this a little more time and continue to talk about, um, let's see, were there other details? Um, that I wanted to cover while we're waiting. I think I'll just go ahead and describe, um, basically these again are command line options that you'll be using to connect to the cluster once it's up and running. And once you're on the machine um, right now, just due to the way that the snapshot has been created, you have to do some things to get ready to run. And that includes changing the shell, the default shell, for the system, um, and then also, uh, and also loading the environment modules, um, and also the next big step that um, I found makes a big difference is, again, preloading the data. So it's it's doing a lazy loading from the Lustre file system um, from the cluster. But what that means is the first time that the data is requested then it goes and gets it from the S3 bucket. But you would not want to do that method um, for running CMAC. So you want to make sure that the data is local to the, the Lustre file system. And so this is one way to do it is to use the SnowHub command to get the data um, local to the Lustre file system. So once the cluster is up, we'll be doing this. Um, and then the way you would detect if this was an issue is if you were running CMAC and you were seeing some IO issues, that would mean that the data isn't local yet to the, the machine. Um, so there's some steps there to configure the data. And then similar to the single virtual machine, you basically go through uh, and submit, a, edit the job to run for one day and then submit the job and then monitor the job in uh, in the Slurm queue using the SQ command. Um, and then you can also log into the compute node similar to what we did for the virtual machine and run HTOP, which basically shows you the efficiency, how well C the CMAC run is using uh, the CPU resources and how much memory it's taking as well. And then after you're done, you can delete that cluster, um, but we'll, we will wait for it to come up. Um, let me just check one more time. It's still creating. <laughs> Let me see if there's any questions. How long do the longest models run for? Yeah, so this goes to the point of using these benchmarks. Um, I'll go ahead and try to answer this live, if that's all right, since we're waiting for the cluster to come up. Um, so you, the amount of time that it takes to run a CMAC model depends on the, the size of your domain and then how many CPU resources you're using or cores you're using and then how fast those uh, cores are. So really, I think it's important to benchmark using a two-day case of whatever size domain and input data that you have on a system and verify how long it takes depending on how many um, cores you use. So you, you could change your domain decomposition, you could use more cores and run 
uh, the model faster, but at some point, because CMAC does not scale linearly, it would wouldn't do you any good to run on thousands of cores because CMAC there wouldn't be enough work per core to run CMAC efficiently. Um, there just isn't enough work to be done uh, for that for that case. So I think um, it's just important to know that whatever your CMAC case is, or if you just want to start by start learning by using these benchmark cases, you'll get a feel and we have data available in the tutorial. So I'll go ahead and show what the tutorial looks like. Um, so this is the landing page for the tutorial. It basically describes what CMAC is and um, gives you some additional background information. So this first chapter again was the steps that I um, went through on how to create a single virtual machine and run CMAC. And then these are kind of additional um, steps on how to run using or how to create a parallel clus cluster and then run CMAC. But this chapter here on um, the, the benchmark timings, like how long does it take to run this 12 US one benchmark that's over the whole US? Um, it basically, it depends. So if you use 96 cores or CPUs, then um, it takes two hours. If, it, if you use more, it takes one hour. So depending on the number of your domain decomposition, so we've changed that NP column, NP rows, as you add more cores, the time to solution is faster. Um, and this also depends on what uh, machine you're, you're testing. So these are very fast ARM processors, but there is a new one out. There's a C7A48 um, extra large, which will beat this current one that I'm describing here. So the important thing is you need to know the price of that instance, how much does it cost, and then how fast you can get a run to completion using that instance. And these benchmarks are ideal for getting a feel for that, I think, I hope. <laughs> All right, let's see if we made any. Ah, create complete. So this was the uh, status that we wanted to get back. Um, it says that the cluster has been created. So now I can go back to the dashboard uh, for the parallel cluster, I think. Um, again, we can see from here um, that just the head node is running at this time. So only the C6A large head node is running. There are no compute nodes running yet. But as soon as we log in and start to run CMAP, we'll start to see those other um, compute nodes be provisioned. So I'm going to go back to the instructions. Let's see here. So we first need to log in. Um, so we're going to use this command here to log into the cluster now that it's been created. So I'm going to just do a copy and a paste. Okay, and once we're on the machine, we're going to use commands very similar to being on a single virtual machine. Um, but so I'm, going to, I'm going to do some additional things in terms of changing the default shell. And this is because uh, I'm just going to exit and log back in. This will help set up the module environment. So we're going to copy a um, basically a, a dot CSHRC that's already available on the machine and then source it. And then now if we do a module load, uh, module list, module avail, <laughs> we can see all the modules available. So by changing the shell, I already had the modules set up in that shell for the libraries that are required to run CMAC. And so we're going to load those libraries here. We're going to use this command, uh, copy. And then we're going to, um, so now if I do a module list, you can see all of these modules have been uh, made available. And so C when CMAC goes to run, it'll be able to find all the libraries and LD environment variables that it needs to run. So the next thing is um, looking at the input data. So we could go to the FSX 
um, directory. And you can see here the three benchmark cases. So there is the uh, Listos domain, which is a three-day case, the 12NE3 domain, which is a Actually, that says two day case. Maybe it is two day. And then <laughs> the 12 US one, which is a um, two day case as well, I believe. So, what I need to do is um, try to make sure that these files are local. So, I'm going to go ahead and run this command um, in the background. And so, that's pulling the data from the S3 bucket to the Lustre file system so that when we run CMAC, there isn't the added latency of trying to go get that data from the S3 bucket the first time the data set is being recovered. And then I'm gonna do some additional work simply because uh, to create the in input directory uh, because the scripts are looking for the data in one place and the, um, the S3 bucket has them in a different place. I'm just linking the data so that it's ready to go. And then I'm going to go to the location for the run scripts. So this is, again, this software is already pre-installed. Um, and once you're on the machine, you can go to that location. Okay, so um, we're gonna edit the script just to run for one day. Uh, and I'll go over it a little. Oh. I'll go over some of the sections a little more. So in this case, this script has these sbatch commands. So we are asking Slurm to provision three of the compute nodes using 96 and task per node. And uh, we're also saying what log file we'd like to be created for this run. And so the thing that has to agree between um, the number of nodes that you're requesting and your domain decomposition. So this number 18 times 16 has to equal to three times 96 and it does. So that is the key is these scripts need to be modified to take into account the number of cores that's available on your EC2 instance. Um, so you'll have to make changes to those sections if you're changing what compute nodes run on. Okay, um, so I'm changing the end date to match the start date. So it'll just run for one day. And now I'm going to, um, okay, so one command that you can use to look at what's available in the queues is in S info. And so you can see here that there are um, 10 compute nodes available and here, but there's nothing running yet. So when we submit this job here, Um, and then use the SQ command, we can see that now we are configuring the CF here means configure three nodes of the type that we requested um, in our YAML configuration. And so um, we will basically wait until this says running here. So once it says running, then we'll know CMAC is running. And you can also tell because the log file will be created and you'll start to see output being generated. So we'll let that um, go ahead and configure. Let me see if there was anything else I needed to cover. So once, uh, so basically once these compute nodes are running, we'll be able to log into them individually and then run HTOP to see how the, what the performance of CMAC on that machine looks like. So each of those three will be running in parallel computing away. And so you could log into each one of them and make sure they were all running efficiently. Um, and then again, to save costs, once that CMAC run is done, after you've done your post-processing, you would wanna delete the cluster. So, so the, the workflow of deleting the resources after you've completed using them is really important just to get used to and to get comfortable with, but know that you haven't lost anything. You have the software still, you have the input data, and you can copy the output data off to an S3 bucket um, as, if, you pre, if you make that part of your workflow. Um, so there's no need to have to be 
wasting resources or funding on resources that you're not using. So let's see. I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like to be in the console while that, that's coming up. So if we look again um, here, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the head node is running and it's already got the two by two checks passed. So that's been up for a while. The things that are not quite running, it says it's running, but they're really still initializing. So these compute nodes, C6A48 extra large, are not running yet, um, but they're being initialized and they were requested in your Slurm script. The script that the run script settings requested these three compute nodes. And so they will start um, running CMAC as soon as they finish initializing. And then once, if something were to fail, for instance, we didn't create, the, in, the input directory didn't quite match. If something were to fail, these compute nodes would stay up currently for five minutes after it fails and then shut down automatically. Um, but if you wanted to shorten that time, you could do that in the YAML file. Let me see. So this is what it looks like again in the uh, AWS parallel cluster user interface. You can see these compute nodes and this actually says it's running, but I think it's really initializing. So we'll look here. Oh, now it says it's running. So <laughs> it's faster than I thought. So we can see what the status is. So it's still um, basically processing. I don't think it's, uh, it's just getting started. So you can see um, we could do a tail that uh, I'm not exactly adept at doing these, but basically it's writing output continuously to this log file. And so at this point, um, we could log into that. Um, so running that SN info command again, we can see that three are allocated and running. Um, and then seven of the machines, so there were 10 total, seven are still idle. So if we wanted to run a different um, CMAC case, we could submit another job, say the two by 96. Um, so if I just submit this, it will fire up additional resources um, as long as they don't exceed 10. So this would only be five. If I did two plus three is five. Um, so if I wanted to run in parallel two runs at the same time to get the benchmark data, I could do that. So I could do S batch here. And you can see again, we've just submitted another job and another two nodes, two compute nodes will be provisioned and can uh, run. And we could submit up to 10. And if we exceed the amount that's available, it will just leave them the jobs pending, similar to on a shared system. So it'll run after another job has been completed. Let's see. So let's go ahead and go back to the instructions. So I'm going to log into the, the compute node, the first one. So you can see uh, SQ. So for this one that's running, we're using compute nodes one, two, and three. So we could log into any of them, but I'm going to choose to log into the first one. So that's logging directly into the compute no node now. And if I run the htop command, you can see they are not running efficiently, which means one of two things. The data has not yet gotten transferred uh, over to that Lustre file system, even though I ran that nohub command, it may be taking longer than uh, what I thought. So we'll we'll have to wait and see if this starts to run more efficiently. Like right now, these CPUs are acting like there's an IO issue. So um, let me exit back out of this compute node and see where we are. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. So it we'll just wait a little bit and see. I could try to run that nohub command again. to preload the files, but I think what I did should have worked.
Now you can't use touch or some other methods that you might be used to for getting files to be local. It doesn't work on this system. So this no help can't command is the proper way to get the files to be local. And there's a link in the in this presentation about that from AWS. Um, but I've had a it's been a little flaky lately. So um, we're just gonna hope that this starts to run. And once the input data has all migrated from the S3 bucket, you know, if, if it's if that no up command isn't working correctly, CMAC will get that data as it runs. It's just that the performance will be poor the first time you run it. So the second time you run that same case, the data is already resident and local, so it will run much faster. Um, so I apologize about that not working 100%. But it's just an example of some issues that you need to think about when you're on the cloud that's a little different than um, running on premises. This link between or lazy loading system between the S3 bucket and uh, the file system. So let's see, we're here. So the examples of the cost for running this benchmark um, for the 12 US one in the East region on 96 cores on a single virtual machine, um, it costs about $13 to run the two-day benchmark. So I, I'm running currently a one-day benchmark, so it only cost half of that. But um, And then if you're running on two nodes, you get faster turnaround time. And so it costs um, a little more because um, it's not quite scaling at 100%, but it's still, uh, if you needed the run to complete in an hour instead of two hours, it's a good option. So if you need faster turnaround time, the way to get it is to provision additional compute nodes. Um, and then the other thing to note is if you had access to the US East 2 region and you could use the HPC 6A 48 extra large node, that cost is only $2.88 $2 per hour compared to the costs that we're paying for this compute node, which is $7 an hour. Um, so, you know, this is 60% less a cost and uh, it will save you money, but you have to have access to this region in order to use that resource. Um, in the tutorial, I also give instructions on how to use the HPC 7A 96 extra large. Um, and that Oh, actually, not that one. The HPC 7G, and that's even less. It's only a dollar and eighty-eight cents. Um, if you needed higher core density, like so, more cores per EC2 instance, and more memory per node, say you you were running the instrumented versions, CMAC ISAM or uh, the coupled model, you would probably need to go to an even. Uh, I don't know if it's considered more expensive, but the latest release of this compute node, AMD compute node, is the HPC 7A 96 extra large that has 192 cores on uh, that's without hyperthreading and then a very large amount of memory. So that is also available. So the big picture um, is <laughs> that by sharing these snapshots and AMIs and sharing the data on the S3 buckets, public S3 buckets, we should be able to get more people up and running CMAC on the cloud very quickly. Now, I can't say that there won't be issues. As you can see, even in this uh, tutorial demonstration, there are issues that you'll have to work through. But I think the few, you know, this is really uh, going to enable many more people say you don't have access to a HPC system. Um, you're a small company and you'd like to run CMAC. Uh, and determine like by reducing emissions of some say mobile emissions, how much does that improve air quality? You will be able to do that using the resources on the cloud without uh, assume and get very quickly, get an understanding of the costs of doing that um, by using benchmarks such as this and using the resources that we're providing. So let's see. So, just to give you some more links, um, there is a cloud computing work group that's been very active and helpful in um, kind of sharing their experience and running on the cloud. And there's presentations that are organized by Fahim and Zach Adelman at LADCO. So if you would like to um, participate and attend those uh, meetings, then please join the cloud computing work group. There's also a poll that we could 
um, could use your help with if you take it we'll kind of get a better understanding of where our community is in terms of trying out cloud resources and what your plans are like do would you like to migrate to the cloud in two years or four years or one year um just it would be helpful to understand that and then um please try out this tutorial so i've kind of gone through a very quick uh, method of creating both the single virtual machine and the cluster to run CMAC, but you can follow the, the more comprehensive instruction in the tutorial as well. And then if you have need help at any point, you can use uh, create a new issue on the CMAC Center forum in the cloud computing um, in the cloud computing I can't, topic, I guess is what it's called. So, and we'll be able to answer that. And so the other thing I was mentioning about a workshop that we're going to be hosting, um, let's see, a workshop at the CMAS conference the last day. So this will be a workshop showing the same resource, but in this case, you will have access to the resources as long, you just have to bring your laptop. Um, and then we're getting help from Tim Brown at AWS to put together the workshop and they, AWS is providing the logins and everything that you need to do this exact set of runs uh, to run CMAC in the cloud. So it'll give you great hands-on experience. Um, and then there's also, if you are trying this on your own and you need help, you, you can uh, join a Zoom session and share your screen. And I can try to look at the issues that you're running into and provide kind of troubleshooting help. So you're welcome to register for any of these as well by visiting the um, QR codes. And let's see. So those those help sessions are the first Friday of the month, except Labor Day. Uh, I'm going to be out the first of September, so it's going to be September 8th. Um, and I, I'd just like to acknowledge um, all the folks that have helped to work on this, including folks at AWS, um, Tim Brown, and um, Tommy Johnson, and Chris Stoner. Chris Stoner helps us with the CMAS data warehouse where we're providing the data. Um, and then in addition to my colleagues that I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, um, Chris Messinas, Ed Anderson, and Tom Pierce uh, were also helpful from the EPA. And then um, again, I'm plugging, you know, hopefully everyone will join the cloud computing work group if you're interested. Um, and that's being led by Zach Adelman and Fahim Sidi. Um, and just wanted to help thank Aaron as well and uh, some of the, my coworkers who helped create plots for these, uh, helped describe this tutorial. So let me go back, sorry, and see if CMAC is running on the cluster. Thank you, Liz. Let me check yeah. that. I'll also plug our Q&A real quick. So feel free to put questions in there for Liz to answer at the end. Yes. So now you can see I have two jobs running in, in parallel in that queue. Um, and I'm just going to check on this one. So this is running now. It looks like it's actually doing some computing. So if I log into those compute nodes, uh, and run HTOP, you can see they're being 100% utilized. So, um, it could, I, I'm not sure why there was initially, you know, maybe just the beginning of the model, it was uh, not starting right away, but we could look at the timings. I mean, that's the other thing about having a fixed benchmark to make sure that your system is um, running efficiently by having a benchmark and the timings available in the tutorial, you can make that comparison yourself when you get up to uh, trying this out, so. So I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. Oh, let me show you the workshop, what that will look like um, if you're able to join us. So this is just a, the landing page of the workshop that we're working on. And it's not it's not live yet. It's a uh, work in progress. But basically, it has a similar structure. We won't be doing the single virtual machine, but we will be having you create the parallel cluster and then on a HPC 7G, because those are the low cost um, compute nodes available in the US East one region. We'll be uh, basically doing the same instructions that I showed in this tutorial uh, in this workshop. 
But the nice thing is that you'll be able to uh, make sure that you have your parallel cluster user interface up and working and that you can learn how to kind of manage and see, like if there's an issue, you can see uh, how to how to determine that um, through this uh, user interface. You can see that things are running. You could look at um, error messages if, if necessary. There's lots of um, things that uh, will be able to help you troubleshoot if you run into problems. But, and that's the nice thing is being able to be in person and um, kind of looking over your shoulder, most likely uh, everything will run smoothly, but occasionally there's always something that um, can create some difficulty and we can help solve that live versus you doing it independently and running into issues and not knowing how to solve them. So. Okay, I think I'm done. So I'll look at the questions. So about that first question about whether we have credits from AWS to run the model. If you attend the workshop um, by registering for the CMAS conference, then you will have credits to do this workshop that um, on the parallel cluster, yes. But I'm not sure we don't have any ability to give credits um, independently for the CMAS community. Um, so the next question, we're looking to run CMAC in GCP. Is that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to find equivalents for parallel cluster. Has the team experimented with Elastic Kubernetes surface services at all? I, I have tried to run, um, we, we did do some initial work with Kubernetes. And um, that work, it wasn't clear to me how to make that kind of universally available to the whole community. It's, it's a very heavy lift in terms of learning how to use it and then using CMAC. Um, in this case, I was trying to use like scripts and command line options that anyone could run if we provided them for folks. And I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have any experience in GCP as well. Thanks. Okay. And then is it possible to attend the workshop online? No, unfortunately, I I don't think there's any ability to do that, although we can look into it. Most likely we'll have to run this first one um, you know, in person on hand, you know, while you're in the room until we verify, basically everyone who's attending the first time is always a, a little bit of a uh, of a helper in terms of helping us understand what we need to fix if there's any issues. So we're gonna run this one live, get all the kinks out of it. And if there's a way that we can offer this in the future online, we will try to figure out how to do it. And it may be something as simple as AWS just makes this tutorial available as part of their list of tutorials that are available for anyone to use. Um, and that will be just a question for Tim. It, once that we're certain that everything works out of the box, then they, it may just be something that you could use, but you would then have to use your own compute uh, credits or whatever you have to pay for the, the resources. And I'll piggyback off of that, Liz, real quick, um, just to note, you do need to be an attendee of the CMS conference to attend the workshop. The workshop is a part of the conference overall. Um, so you will need to register for the conference um, to attend the workshop, which is part of it. Um, and we do have limited seats of 80 people. Um, so we do have a sign up for that, but the separate sign up is free. Um, however, you will you would have to pay to attend the conference, just to clarify. <laughs> Thanks, Erin. I'll say let's give people another minute or two if you have any questions, um, or if you're all good, you're welcome to head out. Um, or if you have any questions, we'll give you a couple of minutes here to send them in. Um, but thank you everybody for joining and thank you so much, Liz, for leading this awesome webinar. Um, I shared the links, to the, the link to the slides uh, in the chat, as well as the link to all the links in the slides. <laughs> um, so feel free to use those. Um, and there will be a recording of this that we'll be sharing on the CMAS Center social media um, and such. So feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or if you would like access to the recording. Oh, perfect. It looks like a couple of questions. Come in.
Yes. So that first question um, for the 12 US one domain, the cost estimate I provided was for a two day run. So you would uh, multiply by 365 divided by two. Um, yeah. And, but that is only for the compute cost, but the compute cost is the majority of the cost. I mean, you could tack on that um, the, the Lustra storage file system is the next highest cost that you would incur. And you could figure out how long you would have the cluster up to do that run and how much the cost would be um, based on the cost per month of the Lustra file system. Thank you. All right, perfect. Also, I'll give people one more minute to send in a question. Um, but thank you all so much for joining. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Again, just one final plug. We can never do enough uh, shameless advertising um, of all those links we have, the Cloud Computing Workgroup. Uh, please answer our poll. That really does help us you know, do these things for the future so that they're useful. Um, as well as trying out the tutorial itself. Uh, we really, really appreciate feedback. I just wanted to say thanks to Liz and Aaron. Uh, great job, really good, well done. And thanks everybody for sticking with us to the end. Thank you. Thanks all, okay, great. Well, I'm gonna end the webinar here, but if you have any other questions that you didn't quite get time to ask, feel free to reach out to us and thank you all for joining us today. Bye-bye.